buying a house is probably going to be the largest financial commitment you make in your life. So in this video, I'm going to give you a number of checks that you can do to make sure the property you are buying is exactly what they say it is and to protect yourself. Buying a property is a minefield. And yes, we do have solicitors to provide some protection. However, they don't cover a number of the things I'm gonna look at in this video. And plus, they won't do those checks for two or three months, whereas many of these things you can find out in advance before you have a viewing or before you make an offer. So this video is gonna be quite long as there are a number of things I wanna show you, but it's is much more involved than some of many of the other basic videos that I've seen online. So if you go through all of these steps, you will minimize the chance that you're gonna buy a dud or have an issue with the property that you are looking at. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to Rightmove. Let's go and find an example property. So I'm gonna go back to my old haunting ground of Waterslade Woods, and let's see what properties are for sales. So once you've found your dream property or a property you're interested in and you wanna arrange a viewing, you wanna do these checks in advance. You don't wanna waste time going for a viewing if some of these things don't check out. And for different people, different things will be red flags. For me, I have a lot of things that could potentially be red flags when I buy a house, but I'm very, very picky. And some things that bother me won't bother other people and vice versa. Some things that bother other people won't bother me. So let's imagine you found a property. The first thing we need to do is to find out the postcode and the council or borough that is under so we can do some of the searches and look up what I wanna do in this video. So let's click on to the map and just go and find a property to look up so I can show you how I would go about finding the postcode and the council. So if we click on one of these red dots and then click on the see full property details button there, this will bring up the listing. And the easiest way to find the postcode is to actually look at the PDF brochure that the estate agents usually upload with the listing. Now on mobile view, this is much harder to see, but on desktop view, if you click on the read more link and scroll to the bottom, you'll have this link here that says particulars, and this will bring up the brochure. So let's bring up the brochure for this particular property and we'll see if it gives us the postcode. So it gives us the road, Forestdale Road, and it also gives us the postcode, but we don't know what house number this is yet. I mean, if we zoom in a bit on that image, that looks like a single digit to me. Let me just zoom in so you guys can see the same thing. But what you can do is, there we go, yeah, it's actually number six. So it's actually visible in the brochure. So now we know straight away this is number six and we know the postcode as well. Now, if you couldn't find the house number, you can go onto Street View and look it up that way. And if you can't find the postcode, what you can do is go to Google and we already know the name of the road. That should be obvious for any of the properties that you're looking at. And often you'll know the first half of the postcode as that is usually listed at the top of the listing. So we know it's ME5. So if we put ME5 in with Forestdale Road, we should get the rest of the postcode. Now on some roads, the second half of the postcode will vary, but this will give you probably enough information to do many of the checks that you wanna do that I'm gonna show you in this video. So if we go back to Google, let's just pop in this information quickly. And I like to pop in the first half of the postcode plus the name of the road. And I put that in speech marks so that it is a exact search. And then if we scroll down, we should see the second half of it. So third link down, ME59NB, which matches up exactly with what we saw in the PDF. So we know the postcode is ME59NB, and we know it's house number six. The next thing we need to do is just look up the council because once we know the council, there are lots of other checks we can do using this information. So when you do the search, you'll probably see two councils listed. You'll have the basically the bigger council, which is Kent County Council, and then Maidstone, which is part of Kent. And you're looking for the one that has housing listed. So we know this property falls under Maidstone Council, which is gonna be really helpful as we go through these checks. So the first one, this is probably the first check I do on all of the properties I look at. And this is to check for planning permission around the area. Now. Your solicitor will do this further down the line, but would you rather find out in two, three months time when you've already spent out on doing surveys and maybe paying for a mortgage application and maybe paying even non-refundable deposits to your solicitors? Or do you want to do these searches in advance? So if this has a planning permission maybe next door that you're not happy with or behind the property you're not happy with, you can just get this property and move on. So the easiest way to find this is just go to Google, search the name of the council you're looking at. So I just searched Maidstone planning applications or Maidstone planning searches, and then it will bring you to a site like this. And pretty much every council in the country will have some sort of search feature like this. And we already know the information. So I'm just gonna pop in the postcode again, 
and we can see all of the plan information that is currently going on in that postcode area. Now, depending on which council you're with, there are additional features as well, and I'm gonna show you one of them now. So this is sorted in date order, so we can see all of the recent planning applications that have gone in. So if you know your number six, you might be looking to see what's going on at maybe number eight or maybe number 10 to see if they've done anything that might be causing a problem or maybe something they've applied for that hasn't actually been built yet that could potentially cause a problem. And you can also do a planning history search on the property that you're looking at as well. So this is really, really helpful. The other thing you can do as well, if you can't find the exact property you're looking for, there on some of these sites, you can also see a map. So if I just click on one of these, I'm not really fussed about the planning permission for this individual property that I've clicked on, but if I click on the map tab here, what it should do if we change some of the filters is actually allow us to see other planning permissions around that. So it makes it much easier for us to visualize which properties around it have got planning issues going on. So if we go to the filters, at the moment it's only showing planning from the last six months. So let's put this back to maybe the last two years. You could even go to five years. I wouldn't do all time because all time just floods it with red lines. So now we can see all of the planning that is going on. Now the property we were looking at to start with was actually near the top of the road here. So you might wanna click on some of these and see what is going on. Will this impact anything? I think the one that I was actually looking at down here was for a single uh, garage conversion, I think it was, there we go. Uh, conversion of the garage into a habitable living space. And keep that in mind because I wanna show you how that comes into play and so another check that I'm gonna show you later on in this video. Another check you can also do, which is directly related to this, just do the same search, do the name of the council, but do building control search instead, because then you can see if any building control applications have gone in, because you don't always need planning permission to do certain projects, but building control will highlight some of the ones that maybe the planning search will have missed. So that's a good search to do as well. Now, if we just go back to what I was talking about with regards to that garage conversion, if we go to Street View, I'm gonna show you something in Street View that not many people actually knows exist. So let me pop in the postcode, hit search, and let's try and find that property we were looking at, which was uh, number 41. And this is a, another thing you will see, depending on which road you're looking at, sometimes Google will give its best guess as to which house number. You can just see there, that's where it believes house number 41 is. So if I pull on Street View here, let's see if we can find house number 41. There we go, that's, uh, if we zoom in, yep, number 41, and you can see the garage conversion is done because that planning permission was from a few years back. But what you can also do on Street View, in this top left-hand corner, click on See More Dates, and then you can see the history of Street View. So if we go back to 2015, there's no garage conversion. And this is quite a cool way of scoping out the area to see what the house you're looking at has been up to, to see what the neighbors have been up to. You can even get an idea of what parking is like as well, as it will show you at different times over the past few years. I think there's over 10 years worth of data now on Street View. So it's well worth checking out. So that is another check I like to do. And this next one, this is a really powerful search you can do. So every council has what's called a local plan where the council sit down every X amount of years and basically allocate part of the area for certain things. So you wanna know if some of the land near you has been allocated maybe for housing development or for commercial development. So you need to check out the local plan. So again, do the same search in Google, take the council and then combine it with local plan or put the council plus local planning map, which is what we're looking at here, which is the local planning map for Maidstone. And you can pop in the postcode if you want, or you can just move the map around until you find the area you wanna focus on. But make sure you turn on the filter. So I like to focus on the allocation so I can see which land has been allocated for building. So at the moment, this is actually the other side of Maystone. You can see how much of this land has been allocated for housing. So if you're looking at a property kind of bordering this, you can see where there's gonna be huge new developments before you even go for a viewing, before you waste any time or money. So make sure you check out the local plans as there's lots of good information on these local plans as to what they've got in store for your area and for the property and the area surrounding the properties that you are looking at. So these next ones are quite a basic search, which most people do, which is the sold house prices. And this isn't so much to get the house price, 
This is more to see whether the house you're buying has been repeatedly bought and sold, which could indicate problems with the neighbors, or if the neighbors themselves have recently moved, which may suggest the new neighbors aren't great, which is why the property you're looking at is selling. So you can do this on Rightmove. I find Rightmove to be a little bit more out of date, or you can do it on Zoopla. So I just looked up the property that I sold last year. It shows on Zoopla in the sold history, but it doesn't show yet on Rightmove. The good thing is with Rightmove, it does show you photos of the old listings, which can be really helpful for you to have a nose through to see what has been sold in the past and what the current owners may have done with that. Um, and Zoopla, I think you can access the same information, but they, they now want you to register for an account. But this is a really helpful way of going through and seeing whether the house you're looking at has been sold recently. So for example, this one here was sold in 2016, 2018, and 2020. Now that isn't necessarily a red flag, you know, it's not uncommon to see that, but it's also not that common either. So for a house to be sold every two years for the past six years, I would certainly be asking questions of the vendor, why they're only moving after two years and so on and so forth. So whether this is the house you're looking at or it's a, the neighbor next door, it's just gonna raise a few question marks that you might wanna get some clarity on to help you with help you feel a bit better about the property that you are considering. So make sure you look through the sold house prices to see what's been going on with the property you're looking at, what's been going on next door, and also to give you an idea of sold prices as well. The next thing I want you to do is what I do for every property that I'm seriously considering. And this involves spending a very small amount of money. This is gonna cost you six pound. And we're gonna do a land registry search and we're gonna buy the title plan and the registry information. So pop in the postcode that you're looking at and hit the search button and then choose the address that you're actually looking at. So let's click on number six. And it'll give you some summary information. But what we're really interested in is scrolling down to this one here, which is view available documents. And when we click on this, it should show you two documents that you can buy. So you've got the title register and it will tell you what's included there. I'm gonna show you an example in a minute and the title plan, which for three pound each, is well worth the investment when you're gonna be spending hundreds of thousands of pounds. So this one here, this is the overview. This shows you the border of the property, which is extremely helpful to see what you're actually buying. So this is outlined in red, and it also shows you the border of the other property. So I really like buying it for that reason. And this one here, this shows you a number of other pieces of information, including the current owner, also, whether there is a mortgage assigned against the property at the moment that needs to be paid off when it's sold. And it also has any restrictive covenants as well that you can go through. So you can find out all of this information early on before you get much further down the line. This is why I like going through this. I know it costs a little bit of money and it does take some time, but it is well worth doing. And it's the same for this next check. And this is something that so many people overlook or they just brush off as, oh, it will be okay. And generally, if you're buying in an urban area, it's not really gonna be an issue. But if you're buying in the country, which I was doing last year, this is a major problem. If the property you're buying doesn't have decent broadband, it is a huge issue for many, many people. So you need to know this in advance. So I use the Ofcom checker. You can check both broadband and mobile coverage here. So if we pop in the postcode and click set postcode, it's gonna tell us what is available. It's gonna pick any address for now. So the one you wanna focus on usually is the super fast one in the middle. If you don't have super fast as a minimum, you're gonna struggle with standard as that is very slow and old. Most of the ones in the country will have questionable internet. So be very, very careful with this. Now this particular area also has ultra fast, but like I say, that is generally only in urban areas. Most rural areas will not have super fast. So you need to know what speed is the minimum you need and what is viable. Don't just brush it off because it becomes a serious issue. Now we do have things like Starlink, which now mitigate this issue to an extent, but of course at a greater cost. And you can also check the mobile coverage as well. So go to view mobile availability, pop in the postcode again, click set postcode, choose the address. And I think this is the best coverage checker available and click on the view map. You can, can't see it there behind me. Let me just hide me very briefly. View map of available services. And this will show you the actual coverage and you can choose between the different networks to see what their voice coverage is like, what their data coverage is like, what their 5G is like as well. So really, really powerful. Make sure you do this if it's gonna be a deal breaker for you. Like I said at the start of the video, things that are an issue for me may not be an issue for you and vice versa. Now this next one might seem a bit intrusive, but 
if I'm going to be spending hundreds of thousands of pounds, I want to do everything I can to try and find out who I'm going to be living near to. So there are two ways you can do this. One is using what I call the limited company search. So you pop in the postcode and then put LTD as well. Now I'm just going to put the postcode again in speech marks there. And this will hopefully show you any limited companies in that road. And if some of them happen to be next door, you can actually find out who your neighbors are. So in this instance, let's just click onto the maps. We'll see who we've got. It doesn't look like there's actually many on this road, but sometimes you'll find there are loads for you to look at. So we've got here, Beetle Stones Garden Maintenance. Let's click on these guys. And now what we can do is a reverse lookup of this company. So if you go to a website called companycheck.co.uk, pop in the company name and click go, this will tell you who the directors are of the business. Now, generally, if it's the director of the business at a residential address, it's going to be the home owner. So if we scroll down, we can see Mr. Samuel Jack Beetlestone lives there, and this is probably his wife. So that's one way you can try and find out who the neighbors are, and then you can do your own searches on social media to try and find out about these people um, and whether it's someone you maybe want to live next door to or not. The other thing you can do is go back to what I showed you very early on, which is looking up the planning application details. So if we just click on the application details, so the one that we were looking at, you can actually look at the documents related to the case. So if we click on documents, the one generally that you're looking for is this one here, which is the application form. Let me just hide the camera again. It says here application details. So when we click on the view button, let me put the camera back on, it should tell us who the applicant is. And if we scroll down, there we go, we can see Mrs. Sarinda Burin is the person that submitted the application for that property. So whether it's the property you're considering or it's the property next door, you can then do your own research on these people and then decide whether you'll be happy living next door to them or not. Like I said, that's quite an invasive step, but you are spending hundreds of thousands of pounds. I'd rather do this in advance. And I did this actually last year, we were looking at a property. I did this search, I found out the person next door was a music teacher offering home lessons. And I was like, I do not want to live next door to that as I've had bad experience in the past of someone who liked to play bass guitar too much next door. So invasive, but also a super important check. And I highly recommend you guys doing all of these searches. The final check isn't something that I can really show you. I mean, you've got street view, but I would also recommend doing multiple drive-bys and walk-bys. So go and park up in the area, have a slow walk-by, see what the traffic like, see if there's any barking dogs, see what the parking is like, see if there's anything else going on. Can you see any building works going on? Are there any yellow signs on the lamppost advertising that plan of mission has been submitted? And do this at different times of the day. Do it in the morning, during the day, in the evenings. Do as many checks as you can. Now, some people are reluctant to do walk-bys, which I completely understand. Do drive-bys instead. And if you do go for a viewing, just go in your other car. You know, do your drive-bys in the car that you're not using for your viewing. Otherwise, it's a bit weird saying that someone I've driven past your house 10 times. So go in your other car instead. But multiple drive-bys and walk-bys at different times. So if you're still with me, hopefully now you've got a load of good searches you can do to ensure the property you're buying isn't gonna cause you any unsuspecting surprises further down the line. If you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate you scroll down and hit the like button. If you wanna see more from me, subscribe to the channel. And what I'm gonna do now is pop up a video talking you guys through how much I think the housing market is gonna crash over the next year or two. And I'll see you guys over there.